If you have osteoporosis and you're concerned about fracturing a hip or fracturing a thigh or a vertebrae, you've come to the right place because that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. Can you cure osteoporosis naturally? In this video, we're going to discuss A, can you do that? Two, how do you reverse osteoporosis using exercise, nutrition, supplementation? But before we get there, what qualifies me to talk about this? Well, my name is Igor. I'm the author of the Amazon bestseller, Osteoporosis Reversal Secrets, and I specialize in helping people with osteoporosis improve their bone density and reduce their fracture risk. So let's address the question. Can you cure osteoporosis naturally? I'm gonna make it nice and simple. No, you cannot cure osteoporosis. We have to differentiate between cure and reverse. You can reverse osteoporosis, but you can't cure it. And here's the difference. Curing means the treatment is so effective, you can't do anything to make it come back. But that's not true because it can absolutely come back if you stop doing what, what reverse it. But can you reverse it? Can you increase your bone density after it's already decreased? Absolutely. And we have dozens of, of success stories with clients that we've done that, that done exactly that with. So yes, you can reverse your, your, your osteoporosis and increase your bone density. And how do you reverse osteoporosis? Well, first, before we get to reversal, let's talk about prevention. Uh, because in the time that it takes you to increase your bonus, you might still experience a fall and a fracture. So first, let's talk about preventing a fall. So to do that, you actually have to look at your overall environment. So make sure there's no like bunched up carpets, make sure there, the, the roads are salted, make sure stairways are well lit and, and so on. Additionally, it might make sense to do some balanced exercises, which is beyond the scope of this video, but I do cover that in my book about the different uh, balanced exercises and progressions. That's on the prevention side of things. And then there is the treatment side of things. How do we treat osteoporosis naturally without medications? There's the exercise, nutrition, supplementation side of, the, size of things. On the exercise side of things, the way that we um, exercise to increase bone density is by doing, of course, strength training. But strength training has to be done in a very specific way for bone strengthening, which is very different than the way you would do it for muscle building. So the way you strengthen the bones is by doing between three and five sets two days per week, five to eight repetitions, using a weight that at the end of five to eight repetitions, if you're to ask yourself, how many more could I have done? The answer should be just between one and three more. If you think you could have done four more, the weight is too light, okay? And the other very, very important variable is to lift the weight as fast and explosively as possible. Lower it under control, but lift it fast. So for example, if you were doing bicep curls, you wouldn't raise it in a controlled tempo. You would raise it as quickly as possible, like so. And then you would lower under control. Lift fast, lower under control. That's very, very important when it comes to bone strengthening. The reason that's important is that when, when a muscle moves fast or there's the intention to move fast, even if the actual speed isn't fast, the bone, the muscle pulls on the bone harder, which, which forces that bone to get stronger and you want to use exercises that are specific to the areas that you want to strengthen the bones in. In other words, if your osteoporosis is at the lower back, you want to use exercises for the lower back. If the osteoporosis is at the hip, that's where you want to focus. If it's at the wrist, that's where you want to focus as well. So use exercises specific to the areas where you want to strengthen. And of course, you might want to strengthen your whole body. That's type one of an exercise that works really well. Type two is impact-based exercises like jumping. Jumping is a very, very beneficial exercise for osteoporosis, but it's also a very high risk exercise. So how do you get the benefits of jumping without the risks of jumping? And the way you do that is using a proper, correct progression that takes you from, I'm too scared to jump, to I'm jumping properly up and down. And that's something like a three to nine month progression, which again is beyond the scope of this particular video, but check out the book, Osteoporosis Reversal Secrets. That's the exercise side of things. On the nutrition side of things, there are a lot of myths surrounding nutrition for osteoporosis. The biggest myth is about calcium. Uh, calcium does not actually strengthen bones. It gives the illusion of strong bones because it improves bone density on the test. But we have to ask ourselves a deeper question. What's the point of improved bone density? It's not just to look on the test, it's actually to decrease the risk of fractures. So what happens when you increase bone density, but the risk of fractures stays low or drops even lower? That's not so good, is it? That kind of gives us the illusion of strong bones, but not actual strong bones. So that's why calcium doesn't work. In multiple meta-analyses that I describe in my book, they look at women and, 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 and categorize them into different categories of calcium consumption. One group of women consumed less than 400 milligrams of calcium per day. One group between 400 and 800. One group 800 to 1200, and one group of 1200. 
And what the researchers saw is there were no differences in fracture risk between these four different groups. In other words, the group consuming the lowest amount of calcium had the same number of fractures as the highest uh, calcium group, even though the highest calcium group actually had a higher bone density. How interesting. So dietary calcium doesn't really make a difference in terms of fracture risk. Dietary protein, however, makes a huge difference. In another uh, meta-analysis that I discussed in my book, uh, they divided women into four categories as well. Group number one, consumed less than 16% of their calories as protein. Group number two, 16 to 18%. Group three, 18 to 20%. Group four, over 20%. And what they found is that the highest protein group had more than a 70% reduction in fracture risk compared to the uh, lowest protein group. What does that tell us? That at least 20% of our daily calories should be high protein foods. That's on the nutrition side of things. Now, in terms of supplements, there are two very effective supplements for reducing your fracture risk. Not just improving bone density, but reducing fracture risk. And those two are one, type one collagen. And again, I emphasize type one collagen because there are five different types and different types of collagen live in different tissues. Type one li lives in bones. Type two is in cartilage. Type three is in hair, skin, and nails, and so on. And so a lot of women will take collagen for hair, skin, and nails and they think that that's going to improve their bone density as well, but it won't. It'll give them nice hair, skin, and nails without changing their bones because the one for hair, skin, and nails is type three. The one that we want for bones is type one. So let's not confuse the two. So that's one of the two most effective supplements. And we would take type one collagen at a dose of about five grams per day. The other effective supplement, especially for osteoporotic women, but not so much for men, is soy isoflavones because they contain phytoestrogens and they mimic the natural effects of estrogen. One of the biggest reasons for osteoporosis is a drop in estrogen levels throughout menopause. If you like this video, please click subscribe, like, and I hope you find this beneficial.